This special edition of Nightline. Nightline's Ashton Singh literally went halfway around the world to take a deep dive in an issue that concerns us all, the environment. And Ashton, your timing couldn't have been better with world leaders meeting this week at the United Nations annual climate conference in Dubai. And you looked at birds? That's right, Byron, birds. And we embedded with a research team doing groundbreaking research on a remote island off the coast of Australia. They believe there's a direct and dangerous link between the health of our oceans and our feathered friends. These researchers' work is detailed, the birds are beautiful, and Byron, all of it, a potential game changer. All right, let's take a look. Deep in the heart of this remote paradise, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, lies a sickness. It's killing one of nature's most important sentinels, the flesh-footed shearwaters. Here, scientists are doing critical research try and answer some of the most consequential questions about the impact of plastic pollution. This is really the headquarters of pollution research for the world if we want to understand how it affects populations. And how those answers could potentially impact all of us. They're like the canary in the coal mine. They're an indicator species. And in this case, uh, it could be indicating what might be happening inside you or me. No, oh, not before you escape it. Hoping the research will spark a global call to action. Nowhere is immune, and it is not somebody else's problem. It is everyone's problem. Hundreds of miles off the eastern coast of Australia, surrounded by the Tasman Sea, lies a small picturesque paradise. We're living in a national park, which doesn't happen anywhere else in Australia. Lord Howe Island, born from volcanic fire and shaped by water. From New York, it couldn't be a farther flight around the globe. And just when you think it's over, this puddle jumper, departing from Sydney, serves as your chariot to a truly remote experience that reminds you of Jurassic Park. It's often called the Galapagos of Australia because it is one of the most diverse uh, bird colonies in Australia. So many, in fact, birds outnumber humans on the island. Just over six miles long and a little more than a mile across at its widest point, fewer than 400 people call Lord Howe home. But even here, a familiar man-made culprit. What most people don't know is that right here is one of the front lines of plastic pollution. <laughs> We're spending a week at this UNESCO World Heritage Site to see firsthand this research undertaken in the field, not a controlled laboratory environment. There really isn't any other data set like this anywhere in the world where a long-lived species that's impacted by plastic has been followed so intensely and where we can link something as important as survival rates to the ingestion of plastic. For nearly a decade, oh, two scientists, Woodhen. Dr. Jennifer Lavers from Western Australia <laughs> and Dr. Oh, Alex <laughs> Bond from England, have been relentless in their quest to understanding the impact of plastics. How did you guys notice shearwaters as sort of this barometer species for understanding what's going on in the greater environment? I think seabirds in general have really demonstrated themselves to be this really reliable indicator. It was just kind of a natural evolution that we would also use them to monitor plastic pollution considering that they interact with it so extensively. While the consequences of global warming Record high global temperatures, record high greenhouse gases, record high sea level rise have become more frequent and more urgent. What Lavers and Bond are studying is no less important. To be the ones who can hopefully answer this question of what does plastic do to something is so fundamental to a species or a population's persistence and survival, mm -hmm. um, that's really exciting. The focus of their research, flesh-footed shearwaters on one of its main breeding grounds a medium-sized dark feathered seabird with a hooked bill. But these birds have become known for one sad trait, one of the most plastic contaminated species in the world. The overall trend is that the amount of birds eating plastic is going up. And that basically tells us that as a global community, we are not doing enough to rein in our plastic consumption and to prevent plastics from getting out into the marine environment. Lavers and Bond have found evidence that the presence of trash causes acute damage to the bird's digestive tract. They've coined a term for this disease, plasticosis. 
Plasticosis is not something you can see. It is a disease that takes place on the inside. Okay, okay, okay. The research begins when Lavers bans the Shearwater's chicks, then flushes their stomachs, carefully counting the pieces of plastic passed on by parents through feeding. We really thought the record from 2011, uh, 276 pieces in a tiny little bird is uh, huge. And then this year, 2023, it all changed. 403 pieces of plastic in a 90 day old baby seabird. The chicks then embark on a grueling migration across the blue horizon. Five or so years later, their biological clock calls them home. This is Tinder. <laughs> bird Tinder. This is bird Tinder. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, they're finding each other. They're doing their thing. For one week, during spring on Lord Howe, which falls during October in the Southern Hemisphere, Lavers and Bond host a welcome party. Can I see your feet, please? Searching for any banded birds returning. <laughs> You've got a band. The hypothesis is that birds that have a lot of plastic in it probably don't make it. So we expect the birds that come back to be the ones that probably didn't have a lot of plastic in them as a chick. Mm. Compiling data on, sounds darling. simple enough. Catch a banded bird, collect some samples, and then compare it to previous data. Plenty of bird bands. Excellent. We should have more than enough for tonight. Usual spot. It's the first night. I'm pretty much sorted. And as the scientist designated assistant. I think we've got everything. I'm ready to rock. I'm not sure what to expect. The birds are nocturnal creatures, complicating our observations. And when they land, they come in hot. No, he's got one. He's, he's got, got one. Right okay. leg. Right okay, leg. Everybody, right just don't move for a second. <laughs> All right, the hunt continues. Oh, he comes straight to me. Thank you. We have band number one. Six, four, five, four, one. That's five let five digits, right? Okay, perfect. Okay. So this is one of the birds I banded in 2011. Hello, we've caught you before. Welcome back. Grab a couple of feathers. So grab maybe two at a time. Ooh, how'd you do? Three. Perfect. Good. Rock star. In the pursuit of science and bird number two, Battle scars. Is this the first bird? You got caught a little bit, huh? Uh, uh, bitten. Yeah. Bitten a little bit. That happens. Before long. Oh, it's actually kind of nice. Yeah. A record breaking nine banded birds returning to the island on a single night. Our previous record was six. We got nine. So, yeah, really happy with that. Yeah. Yeah. What, what did you guys notice about the birds that we were able to take a look at their tags? Yeah. I mean, they're looking pretty healthy. Mm -hmm. Early the next morning, initial analysis of last night's research. First bird is number 64541. Wow, that bird was banded in 2011. Sweet. 12 years ago. Any guesses on the amount of plastic that he might have ingested? Uh, probably not very much, would be my guess. Just by being there, these birds, their success stories. These are quite literally the survivors, mm -hmm. the ones who have, in a lot of cases, beaten the odds. They've gone away. Uh, for years, they figured out how to feed for themselves. A small victory for the scientists, who say less than 10% of the birds they banded return because of ingesting plastic. It turns out when you stuff the stomach full of plastic, those critical functions, those critical organs break down. Mm -hmm. They're damaged to the point that they no longer work. Approximately 8 million metric tons of plastic waste enters our blue world every year. Since it never disintegrates, just breaks down into smaller bits, coated in plankton and algae. Plastics start looking and smelling like dinner. If you've consumed more than about, on average, about four or five pieces of plastic, I'd say probably even less than that. For the most part, we never see you again. Wow. This data is showing it really doesn't take the ingestion of much plastic to tip these birds kind of over an edge to the point that it affects their ability to feed and fly and, and fledge successfully and survive those critical first couple of years at sea. Um, they simply don't come back to Lord Howe Island. To see just how much plastic the flesh-footed shearwaters have ingested, we don't need to look far. There's that one. There's a big blue bottle cap there. Mm -hmm. And if we have even a look around in here for a oh, second. Straight up bottle cap. Yep. So this is all plastic brought back 
by the birds and gets deposited here either as as birds die or as the parents regurgitate it. Yeah, it, it definitely says it's, it's a bigger problem than I think we think about most of the time. But in the course of any research in the wild, the down. variables always appear unexpectedly. Oh my gosh, we have an entangled bird. Very badly entangled. Oh, look at your foot. Oh, it's banded too. Oh, this is unbelievable. Oh no. Should I mark that he passed? Yeah, just mark him as deceased. When we come back, if the dead could speak, what secrets could they reveal? Even this one here, is that a squid beak or is that a little bit of black plastic? Stay with us. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.